Hey guys, it's Hayden here, back with another SATS preparation video. Today, we're going to be looking at adding and subtracting mixed numbers. Now, this was highly requested by lots of you in the comments, so I hope you enjoy it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go through some old actual SATS questions and just unpick the learning as we go. So we're going to start here. I've got a bit of a journey to go through, and the reason we're starting here is something to do with the denominators. I wonder if you can tell exactly what it is. So firstly, a mixed number is made with a whole number, so an integer, so like this first fraction here, it's got the whole number two, and then it's got a fractional part as well. We call it a mixed number because it has a bit of whole number in it, and it has a bit of fraction, okay? And often children find it a bit harder, or maybe they just feel a little bit more under pressure when they're seeing mixed numbers. So first step is to check the denominators. If you are lucky enough, to have denominators that are the same already, which doesn't happen all the time, but you know, it, it clearly happened this time, this is a real SATS question, then you know that straight away your answer is already gonna be written in that denominator. We don't have to do anything with it. Now, when we're adding fractions, and this is different to subtracting, so do stick around through the video where I go through a different strategy for subtracting. When we're adding fractions, I like to do it like this. I always add the holes together first, and I keep them aside. Okay, so two plus three is five, and I'm just gonna hold that. I'm gonna write it down, because I think it's good to write all of this down as you go, but I'm gonna hold it to the side, and I'm just gonna focus on the fractional part now. What I want to solve is one fifth plus two fifths. Now, because we've established that it has the same denominator, that we know this is gonna be easy. We know it's simply going to be one add two, which is three, and we're gonna keep the denominator the same because it's already in fifths. So obviously this is a fairly easy question. And what I do is I circle them. I have, I have my whole number circled and I have my fractional part circled and I simply put these together. Now because this fraction does not go over five fifths, it's not an improper fraction, it really is as simple as writing five holes and three fifths. This is about as easy as it gets, guys. You could probably do all of that process in your head by seeing the three and the two making five seeing the one and the two making three and putting it in fifths, right? Very simple question. So let's go up at one step in difficulty. So this time we've got a mixed number and we're just adding a fraction, okay? So I'm still counting this one, even though it's not two mixed numbers. Now the difference here is they're not the same denominator. But when you look at the denominators, you should notice that one of the denominators goes nicely into the other one. So when finding a common denominator, which is what we're going to have to do here, the common denominator is actually just going to be sixths, okay? And this one's already in sixths, isn't it? So let's, let's do our, our plan exactly as we said before. Let's add the whole numbers together. We've got two, add nothing. So do you know what? I'm just going to write down here two holes, and I'm going to forget about it from the question now. And I'm going to think about the one third, add five sixths part. Okay, now as we've already established, I need a new common denominator. One third can be written as sixths so that I can add it to the five sixths that I've already got. Now, just for good measure, I'm going to bring down the five sixths as well so it's all in line. So, how does one third become six? Well, we need to be looking at what we've just multiplied our denominator by to make six, which is fairly obvious that we're multiplying by two. We must do the same to the numerator to make it an equivalent fraction. One third is the same as two sixths. So now we can do two sixths, add five sixths, which gives us seven sixths. And here we're faced with our first version of this problem. If I put these two parts together, you might think I can write two holes and seven sixths. And although logically that is correct, Okay, in theory, that is correct. When we're writing a mathematical concept like a mixed number, one of the big rules is you cannot have an improper fraction, that's when the numerator is bigger than the denominator, inside of a mixed number. It's kind of like mixing two worlds together. It either needs to be one or the other. We write something entirely as an improper fraction or we write it as a mixed number. You can't have a bit of both. So when we look at seven six, before we got to that stage, our next step should have been can I write this as a mixed number because it's more than one whole? Of course we can. How many uh, sixes are in seven? Well, one, okay? I can make one whole out of this. Six sixths makes one seven, uh, makes one whole. And then we've got one seventh, one sixth left over. Crikey guys, six and sevens are confusing me. So we've got one whole and one sixth, which is the same as seven sixths, okay? So that's really what I want to be adding with this. Because I've got another whole, I can add these two holes together now. I get three holes in total and I get one sixth left over. So I'll just reiterate, the biggest mistake that I see here is children writing their answer as two and seven sixths. It happens a lot, and unfortunately, you do not get the mark for that. You must write it in its correct form. Okay, let's take it up a notch. So this time, similar concept is happening here, guys, but you'll notice we actually have two mixed numbers. 
So if you need to pause the video, then feel free to do that and have a go at these questions yourself before I go through it. But I'm gonna use my good old method. Are we getting used to this now, right? One plus two. So I'm gonna do one plus two. I'm gonna bank my three holes over there. And now I'm going to do one fifth, add one tenth. I think it's always good to write these things out. Uh, I'm gonna pull down my fractions into a new common denominator of tenths. Now this one's already in tenths, so I can just keep it the same. But this side, you can see that I'm doubling five, so I need to double one as well to make two tenths. So I've rewritten one fifth as two tenths, and now I can complete the fractional part of this addition. One plus two is three, so my answer is three tenths. Now, because this is not an improper fraction like the last one, I can simply plonk it onto the end of three here and get three and three tenths. Now, just out of interest, it, it, just for you, know, you guys understanding, if you did write your answer as an improper fraction, let's say you turned three holes into 30 tenths, and you added it all together and you got 33 tenths, this would also be acceptable to write. So just bear that in mind. You're only not allowed to uh, have a mixed number with an improper fraction in it because you're kind of breaking, you're kind of doing a bit of both there. But you can write your answer as either a mixed number or an improper fraction if you did it that way. Okay, one more addition. And now I've actually had to edit this one. Something interesting for you. When I was going through all of the past SATS papers, it turns out there's never, ever in the history of SATS so far, been a mixed number addition question with two denominators where one doesn't go into the other. So I don't know if that says something about how difficult these additions get, but I've made one up for you anyway. So I want you to have a little go at this. I do want you to pause the video and have a go at adding these two. And what do you think we need to do with the denominators this time? Well, I'm gonna go through it now. So I'm gonna go through the same method like I have done for all the other ones. I've got one plus two holes equals three holes. I'm banking that to the side. Now I can just focus on the fractions. Four ninths plus two fifths. Okay, this time we have two different denominators and five doesn't go into nine. We need to make a whole new common denominator. Easiest way to find a common denominator is we're looking for a common multiple of nine and five, as in a number that's in the nine times table and in the five times table. Easiest way to do that is just do nine times five because then you know it's in both times tables, right? Nine times five is 45. So here we are, we're making our fraction into 40 fifths. On this side, we multiplied the bottom by five, right? So let's just take note of that. So we must do the same to the top. Four times five is 20. And on this side, we multiplied the bottom, the denominator, if I'm using proper names, by nine. So we must multiply our numerator by nine as well. Two times nine is 18. We can go ahead and add all of this together now to get the fractional part added together. We're adding four ninths and two fifths, which we've turned into 20 40 fifths and 18 40 fifths for a total of 38 40 fifths. So a bit of a nasty old fraction there, but luckily it doesn't go over 45 40 fifths it doesn't become an improper fraction so i can simply put these two parts together to get my final answer of 3 and 38 40 fifths how about that so there we go just to summarize when adding add the whole numbers together bank it to the side add the two fractions together check that it's not an improper fraction if it is just make sure you pull out any more holes from that and then plonk those two pieces together easy peasy. Now, subtraction is the one that I know a lot of you have come here for. So again, let's start really simple, okay? If the denominators are the same, then you're laughing, all right? They've done half the work for you. So with fractions, when you're subtracting mix from mixed numbers, I do not recommend that you do what we did with addition, which is where you bank the holes to one side and then do the fractions. The reason is this, watch. Let's say I did two take away zero holes and I put two and I banked it. And then I just focused on three eighths, take away five eighths. Ooh, that's not very nice, is it? Because technically I'm gonna get negative two eighths because I'm trying to take away five from three. I don't really wanna be working with negatives when I'm doing this. You can do those, you know, maybe you could go away and think about how it would work conceptually. I really wouldn't recommend it though. So when working with subtraction, just to avoid that risk, here is my actual advice. Always turn the mixed numbers into improper fractions. Always, just do it every time and that way you can avoid this problem. So. To turn a mixed number into an improper fraction, we must do the whole number multiplied by the denominator. So two times eight is 16. And then we must add on the extra three here, add on the numerator. So 16 add three is 19. So two and three eighths is the same as 19 eighths. And let's do the same for this one. Well, this is already a proper fraction. So now we can go ahead and solve it. Can you see that? Because we've got the same denominator, it really is as simple as doing that one step. 19 take away five is 14. So it's 14 eighths. You're allowed to write this number as 14 eighths. Okay, if it turned into a whole number, let's say it was 16 eighths, which we know is the same as 
two wholes, you would have to write it as two wholes. So just bear that in mind. If a fraction can be written as an integer, a whole number, you must write it as a whole number or you don't get the mark. But usually they're not that mean. And actually you can just leave it as this improper fraction. If you really want to be fancy, you could turn it back into a mixed number by thinking how many eights are in 14? Just one with six left over. So it's the same as one and six eighths. You don't need to do this part. I have seen children write this bit and then they convert it wrong. They're just trying to flex. They're trying to show off. And then they... Uh, they write they write it as a mixed number and they get the mixed number bit wrong, but they've written it in the answer box, which means the whole thing has to be marked as wrong because they've written something wrong in the answer box. Just bear that in mind. Let's take it up a notch. So again, look, very similar question. This time the denominators are different. Don't worry about it. Follow my steps. So let's convert this into an improper fraction first. We do not want to work with mixed numbers when subtracting. 2 times 6 is 12 plus 1 is 13. This is 13 sixths. Take away 2 thirds. Okay, next step, let's find a common denominator because they're not the same at the moment. Luckily, three goes into six. So we can just turn them both into six. We can keep this one as 13 sixths because it's already in six. And this one, we can double the denominator, double the numerator to make an equivalent fraction of four sixths. And we can go ahead and complete the subtraction. 13 take away four is nine sixths. So once again, you can leave it like this or you could have converted that to a mixed number. Not that I recommend doing it because you don't need to. You could have written that as one whole and three six, which is also the same as, just for fun, one and a half if you simplified it. Okay, up a notch once again. This one's interesting. Oh, this is kind of different. I'm going off tangent a bit here, but I wanted to show you this because sometimes the mixed number is not really a mixed number at all. It's just an integer. So imagine it's just 10. It has no fractional part. 10 subtracts two and a quarter. So you might be thinking, oh, what do I do here? Because I can't make it into a fraction this time. I mean, you could make it into a fraction, but... This is the only time that I'd say, go ahead and do take away the whole number first. Let's just change this question. 10 take away two is eight, right? And then we still need to take away a quarter. So when you're looking at this question, the way I see this question is actually just eight take away a quarter. Okay, so I get rid of these holes. I just turn it, 10 take away two is eight and I still need to take away the quarter. This is how I'm reimagining that question in my mind. Now with this kind of question, I'm actually thinking of it like on a number line. If this is eight, and this is seven, okay, that was not, not the best number line there, but we can count back in quarters, can't we? This would be uh, this would be seven and one quarter, this would be seven and two quarters, this would be seven and three quarters. If I'm on eight and I'm trying to count back one quarter, okay, I'm just gonna get back to seven and three quarters. So this is a bit of a different question, okay guys? If you ever see one like this, they do generally lend themselves to doing them like kind of with a number line approach. Um, but you can do it another way as well if you wanted to. You could turn this into quarters if you really wanted to. I'm going to show you that just for fun. Just so you can see that, you know what, there are strategies that help here. Let's do it. 10, what would that be in quarters? Well, <laughs> at the moment, if we made it a fraction, it would just be 10 over 1, right? If I want to make that into quarters, I need to multiply everything by 4 to make an equivalent fraction. 10 quarters would be the same as 40. Uh, 10 in quarters, sorry, would be the same as 40 over 4, 40 quarters, because 40 divided by 4 is 10. So it would be 40 quarters, take away. Now, if we try to turn this into an improper fraction, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. It would be 40 quarters, take away 9 quarters, which is 31 quarters. And, of course, I'm sure you've guessed it, 31 quarters is the same as 7 and 3 quarters. I don't really recommend doing that method. I think it's a bit long-winded for a question that was a bit more simple to understand in your head. But anyway, back to what we were doing. Let's look at more traditional questions like this. This is the hardest one I could find, in all honesty. So I looked through all the old SATs papers and I was looking for a really nasty uh, mixed number subtraction question and this is what I found. The reason I don't like it is, one, there's two mixed numbers. Number two, the denominators are different, okay? And number three... The second fraction is larger than the first fraction, so you absolutely can't do the method where you just bank the holes to the left and then try and do two thirds, take away six sevenths, because you'd get a negative fraction. So pause the video if you need to, have a go at this one. It's as hard as it gets, it's as hard as I've ever seen it come up in the SATs, and come back when you're ready to solve it, because that's what I'm about to do right now. So following my own advice and modeling to you how you can do this in less than a minute, are you ready? Four times three is 12 plus two, is 14. I'm converting them both into improper fractions. 1 times 7 is 7, plus 6 is 13. So 13, uh, 14 over 3, 14 thirds, take away 13 sevenths. Next step, common denominator. 
I'm going to use 21 because I know that 3 times 7 is 21. On this side, I'm times it by 7, so I need to multiply my numerator by 7 as well. 14 times 7 we can do in our heads by doing 10 times 7 is 70. 4 times 7 is 28. Add those two parts together to get 98. Bit tricky, but it's doable. And on this side, we're multiplying by 3. 13 times 3, three times, uh, 10 times 3 is 30, 3 times 3 is 9, 39. So once we've done this subtraction, we have solved the question. We do not need to turn it back into a mixed number, unless it makes a whole number, which it won't. So 98 take away 39. Let's do that. If you don't know how to do that in your head by taking away maybe 40 and adding 1, feel free to do it in the bus stop. But I'm going to do it in my head. So I'm going to do 98 take away 40. I'm going to take away one too many, which would give me 58. I'm going to add one back on and get 59. 59 over 21 is the answer, and then you can put your pencil down. That is pretty much as hard as it gets. If you can do that, or you can understand at least how I solved it, then you're going to be fine in this test, guys. Absolutely fine. You don't need to turn this back into a whole number, but if you wanted to, into a mixed number, but if you wanted to, just for fun, we can do that. How many 21s are in 59? Well, let's think about it. 21 out of 21 would be one hole. 42 20 ones would be two holes. Can we get another 21 out of that? And we'd need 63, so not quite. We can make two holes out of that to get to 40, 42. And the remainder from 42 all the way up to 59, that's our remainder, is going to be 17. Okay, 17 21s. Uh, is, so 2 and 17, 20 ones. Is it 20 ones or 20 firsts? 20, 21st, 20 ths? I don't know. What do you think it is? Strange. Anyway, guys, that is the end of the video. I'm going to leave you with this one. So it's your turn. I found another one. I found another old SATS uh, question that I thought was really, really hard. So why don't you have a go at writing this one down and let me know in the comments what you think the answer is. But first of all, please hit that like button. Subscribe. We put a lot of time into these videos and it'd be really nice to, to see you guys uh, interacting in that way and sharing the love, spreading these videos to other people. Anyway, it's been a pleasure. Guys, stay tuned. Plenty more to come.